Welcome to the next lesson about top-level statements. In this lesson, I will cover local variables, functions and types. Local variables are, are not that magic at all. If you take a look at the first snippet, you will see that there is the timer variable that is declared. And as you can see in the second snippet, it will be translated into a perfectly matched local variable of the auto-generated main function. Since C Sharp 7.0, we can declare local functions. And in this case, you can imagine that, for instance, you want to declare a function A that will, will do all the console write line for you. And we can have this in the top level statement manner. So as you can see below, the order does not matter. So you can declare the function above or below of the, its actual call site and it can be put everywhere within the containing function. Although we have this ability to declare the functions when wherever we want to, this may confuse the reader. So if you take a look at the snippet below, you will see that first we call function b, then we declare function a, then we call function a, then we declare function b, and I think I'm lost. So please be warned, the way you structure your top level statements uh, may help or may confuse the reader. So use a kind of convention that you will follow to define them and declare them properly. Again, if we take a look how it is compiled and how it is translated to the underlying IL code, you will see that there is no magic here. So we can see the first top level statement and the function declaration where the function a is declared, you can see that it will be compiled into again a static main method with the entry point and it will be followed by an additional static method related to the declared function a above. You can see that local functions in the top level statements will be translated into static methods of the auto-generated program class. As any other function in C Sharp, local functions with top level statements may capture the context, meaning local variables. So again, you can see that we have this stopwatch that is defined as a, as a variable in the top level statement. Then we have function A and you can see that in the very first line of function A, we can call a method on top of a variable that is declared as a top level statement. This closure, this capturing fact is nicely translated into container. This captured data will be stored in a form of a struct. So we have no allocation in here that enables passing to other local functions by ref, which basically says no copying. In the snippet below, you can see that there is this display class zero that captures the stopwatch. Then in the main method, this field is assigned properly and the structure is passed by ref to the underlying function A. Asynchronous local functions will be compiled and translated as usual, meaning that the underlying main method will be translated into async aware version of it, and then it will be able to call asynchronous function A. It's worth to mention, and it was mentioned in the previous lesson, that we can use these local functions to overcome unsafe problem, because with the local functions, you can have them declared as unsafe, and then inside of this local function, you will be able to use pointer arithmetics and other features that require an unsafe context. To make sure that we do not capture this closure by accident, we can make static local functions. So in this case, you can see that function A is made static so that if we try to compile this specific snippet of a code, it will fail with the following compilation error. A static local function cannot contain a reference to stopwatch. Again, automatic closure capturing was prohibited by the compiler itself. 
The last but not least, we can define local types in top-level statements. The only requirement that we need to fulfill is that they are should be and they are defined after the specific snippet of code from the top level statement. So as you can see in the snippet below, there is this using system console.rail line and then it is followed by a declaration of some class. If we move this declaration of some class above the console write line, it would result in the error top level statements must precede namespace and type declarations. Of course, as types need to be declared as the last ones, you can mix them with uh, local functions. So as you can see in this snippet, you can still write a local function that follows the whole top level statement and then which is followed by some class defined at the bottom of it. Again, I want to warn you, mixing all these things may greatly reduce code readability. If you keep your snippet short, you should be fine. But if it takes 50 or 100 lines, it may be quite complex to follow and to reason about. The easiest convention to follow is somewhat related to the compiler errors that we received when we placed a type declaration in the middle of a top level statement. We could imagine that we could define types at the bottom of it, methods or functions in the middle of it, and then have a really simple short snippet of code at the very beginning of it that defines the top level statement and uses all that is defined beneath. It's time for another terrible, terrible programming joke. What's wrong with the snippet below? Can you see what's wrong with it? What would be the result of this output? The result would be nothing because the method that you can see in there, that's a, just a local function named main that is not called from the top level statement. If you're familiar with the Visual C++ and good old days of old Visual Studio, you may find the global namespace familiar. So all the top level types are implicitly placed into this global namespace. So you can use them in a regular namespace and regular type declaration as in the snippet below. As you can see, we use this global and that is followed by the inner class, which was defined in the top level statement. As we are pushing boundaries that hard, you could ask maybe, maybe it would be good to be able to define functions and the namespace level without the type or maybe in global namespace. All these features uh, were heavily discussed when introducing top level statements. And as you can see in this reasoning below, it was mentioned that the, the whole BCL, the whole base class library design, it didn't account for top level functions in addition to other well-known and used libraries. So again, we have years of history of design based on the strong and solid foundations. And now if that feature was introduced, there could be strong, strong urge to move to these new and shiny capabilities provided by the newest version of the language. The conclusion was that this feature request is rejected. If you want to dive deeper into top level statements and functions, here are some materials. The first discusses the mentioned top level statements and functions. The second one, it covers the exploration of different kinds of top level statements. The third relates to our quite favorite topic, heap allocations of local functions. And the last but not least covers the design meeting notes that in depth cover the reasoning behind the specific C-sharp features. Thank you.